guys, it's Carl. So in case you didn't know, OnePlus actually just dropped a tablet, the OnePlus Pad, and typically uh, OnePlus is known for their smartphones. So this is the OnePlus 11, the latest one that they have. And um, interesting move by them. I didn't really uh, see this one coming, but I have it here early. You can see here, it's a very OnePlus inspired looking device. So it's got, uh, of course, the iconic uh, OnePlus badging. And in case you didn't know, a uh, OnePlus is officially owned by Oppo. Now they're underneath that Oppo brand, but they're still continuing to push out their own devices and it's even in the iconic uh, OnePlus colorway of 2023 which is green so in the OnePlus 11 this is eternal green it's a lot lighter whereas uh, this which is a bit more of a forest green this is called halo green so um, if you are a green fan I guess now is the time to rejoice the unboxing experience very much like the phone more of that red branding on the insides I've always loved uh, OnePlus uh, packaging and of course you have the user manuals warranty info in this little red packet and underneath we do have a super VOOC charger. It's 67 watts but strangely enough you have that USB-A port on the back and you still get another piece of iconic uh, OnePlus tech. It's that uh, ever visible red USB-C to that USB-A cable and this does have a pretty fast charging time. So the tablet itself has a 9510 milliamp hour battery. You can get a full charge in 60 minutes. And one of the big specs of this guy is it's standby time. So you get around 30 days of a standby. And when I initially unboxed this, I've had this actually close to a month. I put it back in the box as it was on the list to do. It was just kind of calmly sitting um, in the box and I don't think I went under 35% uh, battery life so it is uh, pretty dope but looking around the rest of the design like I said it's very one plus looking it even has that very large uh, camera sensor on the back which is middle placed it is a 13 megapixel shooter it takes half decent photos as long as the lighting is good. It is center mounted, so the intended use is meant to be in this landscape orientation, which you'll see in a second when I combine it with the keyboard case combo. So this is actually the first uh, tablet, uh, the first in the world they say, with a seven by five aspect ratio. 11.61 inch display, just under 12 inches, 2800 by 2000 and a 144 hertz refresh rate with a 500 nits of brightness. In this form factor, I guess it is quite a bit easier to uh, read content, it's more uh, um, bookish. I'm a fan of this aspect ratio because I tend to consume most content in portrait form when I'm browsing the net, when I'm looking through web pages, and only switch it to landscape when I'm consuming actual like video content when I'm watching Netflix. I've watched YouTube videos on this, it's been great. But when actually using the tablet, I find that my hands rest weirdly on the camera sensor. So I find it strange that OnePlus is sticking to this aspect ratio, which I like, but uh, the camera placement makes it uh, a bit odd. It's kind of counterintuitive. When you are watching landscape, the content, uh, because of that aspect ratio, does get some pretty big uh, bars on the side. So of course you can always uh, pinch to zoom depending on what you're watching. But when you are consuming it in that, um, I guess, portrait form, you still get a lot more than a traditional uh, 16 by nine. So it's obviously uh, a bit of give and take. One thing I have noticed though, uh, for example, I was watching The Mandalorian trying to catch up on my episodes. I was actually traveling with this uh, on a trip. I was watching it in my hotel room. The speaker quality of this is actually pretty decent. There's uh, four speakers built in and it's a noticeable upgrade if you're especially watching most content uh, on your phone, even from my OnePlus device to say my iPhone, which I typically uh, travel around with. It's a nice uh, thing to have, obviously, benefits of having a larger device, the larger display, hence why you would uh, travel with a tablet. On the inside, it's powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 9000, so one of the latest flagships uh, by MediaTek. The silicone on the inside is good. It's got eight gigs of RAM for the most part, a pretty stutter and lag-free experience. I've always been a fan of Oxygen OS, and I think the biggest uh, stutter experience that I've got is actually when you rotate it from a portrait to landscape, there's sometimes the hint of lag, which you can kind of see on video here. It just kind of takes an extra half second sometimes to uh, to rotate. I'm sure that can be fixed uh, pretty easily in a software update, but it's just that occasional little hiccup uh, which I do notice. It does come in at 479 US or 649 Canadian, so around that mid-tier price. But if you did place a pre-order, depending on the region you were in, uh, $99, you could get either the magnetic keyboard combo or the stylus. Hopefully you opted for the keyboard combo. It's the better of the accessories. It's the one that I would definitely recommend getting. I think it makes the uh, tablet experience uh, so much better, a bit more laptop-esque, obviously. It's a nice and simple design, the faux leather uh, green leather on the outside. It does have that hole punch cut out in the middle. It does give me 
an extra little bit of wiggle, a bit more than I'd want uh, on the outside, which uh, you can actually kind of see here. I am glad though on the inside, the wrist pads are in aluminum. It's nice to see those uh, not in that leather. That's usually the area on cases which wears down the quickest. The keys are nice and spaced. It's got some decent travel. It's got really nice uh, tactile feedback to it. It actually sounds great. My one thing though, the trackpad, which gives good feedback is just a tad bit uh, small for my taste, but overall it's the accessory to get. You could also get the stylus, which I mentioned. It's um, nowhere in the league of what uh, the Apple Pencil is. It feels honestly a bit too lightweight. It almost feels like it's missing the battery inside. It's easy to pair. It snaps to the top and charges just like the Apple Pencil does. Finding the charging spot for it is a little bit harder. It's actually not in the middle. It's off center with the uh, tip facing out and um, it'll charge up in a couple minutes and it's good to use. Once again, not as good as the Apple Pencil, not as responsive, and it just doesn't have that nice uh, weight to it, which um, since I'm a big stationary fan, I'm all around having a pen that has substantial weight. I I guess this is lighter, which would make it easier to hold, but it just feels um, a bit on the cheap side for me. But yeah, that's kind of been my experience with the OnePlus pad. I like the form factor, and especially if you're a OnePlus fan, I know the cult following has slowly been dying out over the years, but that's the nice thing about being in the ecosystem. If you have this, obviously the tablet, you could even grab the OnePlus Buds. They all kind of talk to each other. Switching between devices, transferring data between all of them is of course just that tad bit easier, and that's nice to have all of the same devices devices from the same brand. So let me know your thoughts if you are picking one up. I think you can get by without a stylus and if you are an artist, if you're dead set on using one, I'd still say go towards an iPad, even the entry level one still has a better Apple Pencil experience, but still solid combo. Definitely get the uh, keyboard combo magnetic case with it. Just um, don't mind the extra bit of wobble and I'll uh, catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.